Hello everyone, welcome to a new series on the channel called Modern Pioneer. This series is uh, going to be here on Hinterland, a map by Omatana. If you're not familiar with Omatana, you should get familiar with Omatana because she's awesome. She does a lot of mods for Farming Simulator, and this is, I think, her first map for FS22. In fact, it may be her only original map for FS22. I know she's done some other work with the base game maps, but... Kind of reminds me to just throw a thank you out to Tin Man and a subscriber on the channel for suggesting this map. I actually wasn't looking at this map for a possibility of the series, and... He suggested it, I took a look at it, and I was immediately drawn to it. And I'm like, yeah, this map, I think we can I think we can do some damage here. Or some good, depending on how you look at it. So what's going on with this map? What's the deal? Why Modern Pioneer? Well, we're taking a bunch of money from Kubota Farm. You can see we have half a million in the bank from starters. I have sold most of the equipment that came with the, uh, that was uh, originally with the map and have purchased uh, some upgrades, not dramatic upgrades in most cases, but just some upgrades. We'll go through those here in a second. I also purchased um, some extra land. Let's take a quick look at that. So the map is basically one of these wilderness maps where it's just um, squared off into blocks into sections. I went ahead and purchased um, our surrounding land and I also purchased the city. So if any of you watch like um, Schitt's Creek, fantastic show, you will know that uh, it's based on the fact that this family, well, the father bought the town Schitt's Creek as a spoof present for his son. They end up living there. But so, yeah, we bought this town. Um, <clears throat> we basically have first rights to all of this land around here. So they can't sell any of these plots to anybody else other than us or without offering it to us first. So we have first dibs. We have already purchased uh, this land that you see here in blue. So we've got some land that we can work with uh, straight off the bat. Uh, if we look, uh, if you're not familiar with this area, if we look down here, this is the main, well, not really town, but it is kind of the town, right? And basically we've got... Another cow shed over here. Now, originally, I think there were 10. I forget which way it was. There was either 10 here and 6 on the farm or vice versa. I basically transferred the cows to the farm. So we've got 16 cows for starters. There is a uh, supermarket here. I believe this is kind of a supermarket, kind of an all-around shop where we can sell things. This is an area where we can sell things here that will be picked up. Like our grain and stuff will be picked up by that ship that's coming right now. You can see in the distance. It shows up every once in a while. Our store is actually right here. It's not a big store. Shouldn't be a big store. It's this little store. Hi. 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 And uh, a little workshop here if we if we need it while we're down here. Right here is kind of a uh, bakery of sorts, I believe. And we own this bakery. Um, you own this bakery regardless, I think. Uh, we didn't need to buy the town to own this bakery, but it's got several production, um, several production, uh, what, products? Several products that we can produce. Maybe that's a better way to put it. So we'll be using this as our primary production chain to begin with. There is a restaurant over here that we can sell to. We can also go into the restaurant. Hi. Hi. And sit down and have a little snacky poo. Very, very nice. Always remember to close the door. Want to be polite. And that's basically it for the downtown hinterland, so to speak, area. Not a great deal to it, but everything we kind of need to get started for sure. Just go over the equipment real quick. Um, picked up this Kloss Combine, the 660 Lexion. With kind of a basic sized, 
I don't know, seven meter, eight meter header on it. Purchased this uh, mowing setup here, more or less. I wanted some type of a dedicated, kind of a dedicated mowing system. And I really, really like this setup. I really liked our Kubota mower, but I thought I'd give this uh, Axion a try. So we've got an 850 Axion with matching cloths front and rear mowers and that uh, this mower setup is uh, capable of doing swaths so that'll be handy been wanting an opportunity to use this mod this uh, Lamborghini kind of a nod to Jeremy Clarkson from Clarkson Farms so we have a nice Lambo uh, on the farm this trailer is an original piece that came with it this um, yeah this wagon here this class wagon is an original piece that came with it. I didn't upgrade that. I did upgrade the Pottinger. Uh, the original one was the smallest Pottinger. I upgraded it to the slightly larger one. And this also has a um, silage additive to it as well, which I think will be super helpful. Over here's, uh, oh, we do have some chickens. And our animals are gonna be the first things we're gonna wanna tend to because they are hungry and, and for the cows, they are also thirsty. Chickens have no food right now. They do not need water, but we do need to feed them. Here's our little house where we can skip ahead time. We can also enter the little hoose and change our outfit. This is how we look right now. Pretty manly. Over yonder, I picked up this Joskin water tra tanker. I think this might be a modded one that holds a little bit more. I think I did. Regardless, we got a water tanker for our cows. We need to get them some water pretty quick. And some food. They are starving Marvin for sure. Nice little view of the uh, of our own private uh, little uh, pond. Maybe a little bit bigger than a pond. Almost a little lake. Heading over here, I did keep the original Vultra that came with the game. I actually quite like this blue Vultra, so I said, you know what, we're going to keep that Vultra. I did kind of customize it a little bit. This Vultra now has um, reverse. Oh, no, I did not. I did, must not have saved it. Okay. I thought I had customized this thing. Maybe I will. I'm going to add reverse driving to it. I don't think we ever are going to use reverse driving, but hey, it'll be, uh, it'll be different. Picked up this John Deere planter nice planter kept the original in-game amazon spreader upgraded our tether slightly picked up this nice wrapper i don't think the game came with a wrapper but uh for square bailing kept the original wind rower that came with the game with the map i keep saying game but you know what i mean came with the map purchased this uh crone big baler Oh, yeah, I was going to get the other Crone Big Baler, but I thought, you know what? I kind of wanted to try. I've been wanting to try this old school Crone Big Baler. So a nice square baler for us to uh, to try out. I went ahead and added this workshop to the property. I figured instead of having to drive uh, into, you know, so far into town, <laughs> it'd be nice to have an on-hand workshop. There are mods that I am avoiding on this particular map. Um, I'm not going to be using the mobile workshop uh, mod. You're probably used to seeing that from me. So if we come up to an item and do this number, we can do repairs and customize. We are not going to be using that mod in this series. We're going to have to be bringing our stuff to our workshop to work on. Upgrade, repair, paint, whatever we want to do. I did grab a roller for us. So we picked up this uh, Gootler mayor roller this came this horse was original to the map this is omatana's um uh modded um subsoiler it is also now a plow or a plow that can also also or cultivator am i getting this wrong i'm think i'm talking out of my rear i think it's it's basically she modded it so it can be uh so it can create fields we might actually change this out for something a little bit bigger um pretty soon in fact we might do that quite soon and then a planter i picked up this um Vodersted planter kind of a sharp looking deal i haven't used this one yet in fs22 so i thought this would be a nice combo to use for a planter for us added this shed of course too the shed was not originally here on this map 
And that's really all of the customization, I think, that I have done and all the equipment I have added. Oh, and one other thing. If we need to find a need to get rid of a tree, we've got the old axe. No chainsaws here in Hinterland. We've got the axe. Don't know uh, what tree I can... There we go. We don't want to cut that tree down. But you get the idea. We've got an axe now. Let's go ahead and just take a quick peek in flight mode at some of the surrounding land that we have. So we own um, three fields that are ready to harv uh, either ready to harvest or almost ready to harvest. We've got this guy right here, which is some canola that's ready to harvest. We've got this little field right here, sorghum, ready to harvest. And I believe that those are the only two fields that have... Oh, no, sorry. thought there were three. And here's a third map, our third um, field. There's the word I'm looking for, of wheat that is also ready to harvest. Of course, all of these are fairly low yield right now. They're just kind of to kickstart and, and get you going. We are not playing precision farming. We are playing standard uh, farming. So we are not going to be doing any precision farming stuff. We're not going to be getting any bonuses. We're not going to be dealing with any of that stuff. No pH and uh, nitrogen and whatnot. This is going to be old school. If I can remember how to play old school. Um, I think double fertilization, all that stuff. One thing I also forgot that we're going to need to buy is a weeder. I cannot find weeders anywhere. I, modders have just said, I don't want to deal with weeders because I think I found like three weeder mods. There's just not, there just aren't any out there. If you know of any, let me know. They're just, the selection of weeders for this game is, is so limited. Um, so basically we'll probably be just buying an in-game um, weeder, I would say. is probably going to be our best bet. And we can buy some equipment along the way as we go. Have the uh, ship bring it in, and we'll go pick it up down by the dock. Like I mentioned before, we have some animals. We have 16 cows that are very hungry and thirsty. We've got chickens that are hungry, so we're going to have to deal with those. Uh, the game we are playing on normal economic difficulty. We do have traffic turned on. I don't think there's any traffic that comes around. Seasonal growth is on for one day, so we are playing seasonal. Crop destruction is off. Periodic plowing required is off, actually. Uh, field stones are off. I have no interest in ever playing with field stones again, um, unless they change something. But in FS22, field stones, no thank you. Lime required is on. Weeds are on. Fast dirt, of course. We like our stuff to get dirty as quickly as possible. So basically, we're going to be playing normal economic mode. Um, time scale. Actually, I think I had it set to off, so we're going to go ahead and turn on time. I think that's about all of the stuff we need to know. Oh, money units. We can go ahead and switch to euros, kilometers, I think, and Celsius and hectares. Since we are in Germany, we need to play by the rules. And I think that is... I think that's about it. Let me go ahead and get this business off because that's going to get annoying. Uh, I think I turned off. I noticed that if flight mode is on, even though the state is off, you can't enter a tractor. So if I turn off flight mode like that, now I can enter a tractor. Just kind of a weird little thing with... Um, easy development tools. I'm not so sure why that is. It doesn't throw an error or anything, but it is what it is. I'm used to it now for the most part. But let's take care of one thing real quick. Let's get our cows something to drink straight away because honestly I feel pretty bad that they don't even have water at this point. So let's talk a little bit about what um, what the plan is kind of for this map. Well, generally speaking, I I really don't know how long the series is going to be. We'll just kind of see how it goes. 
ultimately I would like to own more land. I would like to get more fields created. Um, I also, I really like the way Omatana did this, by the way. She has this kind of buy all station right here and water is free which I thought was kind of nice because I tried to fill up the water tanker um, from this from the water source right in front of us and from that water source over there and I could not get it to fill so I don't know if that's something the map author has to enable um, I'm assuming it is but she's given us free water anyways so I'm not too worried about that Let's see if we can just give our give our cows a little drink here. If I made it, there we go. Get them started off so that they at least have something to wet their whistles, for goodness sakes. We are in August, and typically August is not the coolest month of the year, so they're probably getting a little thirsty. I think that'll take care of business quite nicely right there I think I am going to add reverse driving because I just thought of something it might be kind of nice to have reverse driving for backing up trailers that might be kind of a nice little little bonus right make things a little bit easier So we are going to, I would say, straight away. It's kind of a toss up. We can go ahead and get uh, wheat, our wheat field harvested. That will give our chickens something to gnaw on. I don't think our chickens have any special food requirements. They're simply a grain fed. So I think if we can get started on our wheat field straight away, our chickens will appreciate that dr dramatically. Let's get our cultivator unfolded. Haven't used a cloth cultivate uh, combine. Sorry get our combine unfolded. Haven't used the cloth combine in a while, I would say. Let's see if we've got Windrow swap turned on. Let's enable our swap so we can take advantage of getting some straw. Either to sell or our, um, I don't know if we're going to worry about TMR straight away. I don't have a TMR mixer. Um, I think I think to begin with, we can basically stick with hay and grass, and um, and see how see how well they do. I would like to do some total mix rations for them since we have a wrapper, so we can make silage. We don't have a bunker. Bale wrapper, so we can at least do some silage and uh, maybe do something for our cows to give them a little, a little extra treat instead of just feeding them hay and grass.
production, but we'll be adding some cows to the bunch as well. As we go, my plan too is not only to expand as far as land goes and farmland, but I wouldn't mind at all um, setting down some more animal pens. Um, Omatana actually recently released um, an, uh, an open pasture sheep pen mod, which I have enabled and we are probably going to take advantage of on this map. You can either have milk sheep or wool sheep. She actually uh, had a nice little tutorial video on her channel. about that and she mentions in that tutorial that you do make more money with the wool sheep than you do the milk sheep but she wanted to have a an option there for people who wanted to, you know, to be able to decide for themselves what type of sheep they wanted to raise but very nice little mod so I think we'll probably be taking care of that we probably will put down uh, I don't think we're going to worry about pigs but I think we'll do Obviously chickens, cows, probably more cows. We have the pen down by the dock that we can um, add to. And I haven't really decided about horses, if I'm being honest with you. I'm not a huge fan of... I mean, they're okay, I have, I have, but I've done horses already in this game. Kind of had my, I've had my fill. I had quite a large horse thing going on on Elm Creek. But if we want to get some horses, we are certainly able to do that as well. So basically, it's going to be animal husbandry. It's going to be putting down, creating more fields, and I wouldn't even mind at some point. Um, Maybe even putting down some housing so that we can rent out maybe some summer cottages and stuff to people for some extra cash, do some rental properties or something like that. You know, may not be that bad of an idea. Like I said, I don't know how long this uh, series is going to go on for. We'll just play it until. we know it's time to leave we'll come up with something else doing a doing a true like real survival kind of series is not out of the question I wouldn't necessarily mind doing that in the future I just feel like we are playing, I kind of felt like um, we're playing, uh, we're playing the old family farm and I feel like that mostly has, you know, old equipment already involved there. And I feel like with the survival series for the most part, you kind of start with that minimalist kind of equipment and I didn't want to do that while we're still working on the old family farm. Speaking of the old family farm, we still have several episodes to go there. Uh, I still want to get a little bit further into that map as far as buying some more property. And it's a... Oh, it's been so much fun to play, too. And we just purchased uh, a sheep pen as well on that map has some goats, I guess they're goats. And some kids. Is that baby goats or kids? Baby goats or kids, baby sheep or lambs. Uh, I'm not the, uh, I'm not super up on all the names of, uh, of the children of animals. I know dogs and puppies, cats and kittens. I wonder what baby hamsters are called. Are they 
it is called hamsters. Regardless. I had a hamster. I had several hamsters, actually. Well, not, not a lot, but I think two or three hamsters growing up. The first hamster I had was Tabitha. She's pretty cool, actually. She was a pretty, pretty cool little chick hamster. She, um, she wouldn't bite or anything. She was super, super friendly, super chill. Just like just hanging out. Unfortunately, she died one night uh, running on her wheel. I was laying in bed and always fall asleep to the little hamster wheel going, you know, kind of a little bit of a, of a it was a metal cage and a metal wheel. So it kind of had a distinct kind of rattle to it. <laughs> and I'll never forget, you know, I, I was listening to that thing and I was thinking I was about ready to doze off and I heard, I heard the wheel stop and I heard a little bit of a kind of a choke thing. And I was laying in bed, it's dark, and I'm like, Tabitha, you all right, girl? I turned my light on, and she was she was in the afterlife, laying on her little wood chip bed. It was kind of sad. Then I got Tabby 2, Tabitha 2. I know, I was pretty uh, creative with my hamster names, right? So I got Tabitha 2. She was pretty chill. She was all right. She was a teddy bear hamster, if I remember right. They were pretty cool, because you got those habit trail cages that had, like, the tubes. I got kind of an upgrade on her. I think my parents, or my mom at least, kind of felt bad for me, um, because Tabitha died, and she gave me kind of an upgrade cage, so I got a habit trail, I think, with some tubes in it. And, um, got Tabitha too. I don't know how long I had her. I honestly don't remember her passing away as much. I think I was just cold. I think I was just a cold heart to the death of hamsters at that point. But um, I just was hurt, and I just couldn't be hurt again. All the love in my heart had been given, had been given to Tabitha, the original hamster. So Tabby too, and then. Um, Actually, I think those were the only two I had growing up. And then when I became a father, um, I thought, well, of course my kids are like hamsters just as much as I did, right? Not really. I mean, they thought they were all right. Certainly, there was no connection. You know, they had the internet and everything, so who needs a hamster if you've got the internet, right? And... Um, So I bought them a hamster and got a cage and everything. I say I bought them the hamster. It was actually probably more mine than anything. And, um, yeah, that hamster didn't have a great life. It got sick and its little pouch. You know how they can stuff, like, all that food in their pouches? This Lambo has a pretty good sound to it. They can kind of stuff a lot of food in their pouches. In fact, I think I saw in a documentary that it's like one and a half times their body weight or something crazy. But I think it overstuffed its pouches. And it got an infection in its pouch. It was nasty. Nasty. Took it to the vet and the vet was like, look, man. Basically, the vet was like, look. And it was, a, it was a female vet. She was really cool. But she was like, look, unless there's some kind of an emotional tie going on here, um, this, like, $5 hamster is going to cost you about $600 to fix. So you can make the call. Well, that was all I needed to hear. And uh, I don't even remember that, that hamster's name. That's how, how bad it was. Oh, I can't remember that hamster's name. So that hamster went bye-bye. Good job, Brad. Way to line up that trailer. <laughs> Not even sneaking close. Let's give that one more try. Actually, I think I can adjust that spout so it's a little bit more down than out. I'm not saying that as an excuse for missing it, because clearly I was very far off. But I think you can. Let's take a quick peek at that. Nope. 
I'm adjusting the. How do you adjust? Oh, uh, come on, really? Let's see here. If we go in and turn off mouse, open HUD with mouse. Wait, what's going on here? What am I? Am I opening the door? Oh, I'm opening the door. Oh, both doors. One door. <laughs> Just... <laughs> what about two? What about double mouse? Man, I thought for sure there was a way to adjust that. Maybe not. I could have swore there was. I thought that's the wheel for that. You know what? Maybe it's on the longer tube that you can adjust it. But I thought you could adjust that black part, but it doesn't look like it has any kind of adjustment to it. So maybe it's on the longer, because you can um, customize different lengths. On the auger, what do they call that thing on the pipe? Man, I like this Lambo. I do like this Lambo. Look at the interior. Beautiful. A little too white, though. It's going to get dirty pretty quick. The inside, I would probably... I'd have to take my shoes off before getting into it. What a nice-looking tractor, though, huh? Well, let's get this field finished up so we can feel like we accomplished something on this episode. I wasn't really planning on even get this far, but you know what? We are this far, so let's just get her done. Did you all have pets? Hamsters? Other than dogs and cats, we had a cat named Moses. I think I mentioned that cat before at some point or another. Moses was a pretty chill cat. Um, I remember Moses... Um, I don't know what happened to Moses. I was pretty young, uh, so I honestly I don't remember what Moses, I mean obviously Moses is no longer with us. Moses parted one last scene a long time ago, but um, pretty chill cat uh, for sure. Then we had a dog named Snoopy, yeah pretty unique in there right? Snoopy was a Boodle Beagle mix. So Snoopy was a Peagle or a Boodle. Snoopy was pretty cool until he got old. Then when he got old, he just got to be really cranky and crotchety. And, which I don't blame him. He probably, you know, he probably was in some, some arthritis and stuff. And, Vision was going as well, so he get pretty freaked out once in a while because I think he was blind in one eye eventually. But overall, Snoopy was a was a, was a good dog, was a good family dog. Put up with um, us kids really, really well. Was not a biter or anything like that. A chill dog. That was it, Snoopy and Moses. After Snoopy went, my mom was like, nope, no more dogs, no more cats, no more nothing. Snoopy was a, was a tough loss for the family. I was in my first year of college. Snoopy was around a long time. Snoopy was with our family for, I think he was 15 years old or so. He was, a, he was an old dog. And uh, I was in my first year of college. And a friend of the family worked at the college, actually worked at the cafeteria, was a chef, a cook in the cafeteria at the college. And um, one day I was walking down the hall to go to lunch. I think I was going to lunch. And he 
saw me walking down the hall and he came up to me he's, and he's like, hey Brad, what's going on? I'm like, oh, what's going on, Craig? And he's like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear about your dog, man. And I'm like, what? And that's how I found out that Snoopy had left us permanently. He felt terrible. I think, I think he felt pretty bad that he was the one to tell me. I think he assumed that I would already know, which I think was a reasonable assumption because my mom should have told me. I just noticed that um, air freshener hanging there. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> I don't know. I just haven't been really... Obviously, I'm not very... Um, I don't pay close attention to things, do I? But that air freshener right there is pretty sweet. But yeah, Snoopy left us, and that's how I found out. You know, Thanks for telling me, Mom. Had to find out from her family at college. what pets are tough sometimes I I've had my own dogs and I had to put uh, one of them down and it was really 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 hard to do they become part of the family and everything at least in my situation the way I was the way I grew up Snoopy was part of the family went with us on vacations the whole nine yards you know So, I think we have a good start to Hinterland. I think we are going to have a good time on this map. I think we're going to get some stuff done. Make some progress, hopefully, sooner than later. I like our claws. Very nice. Looking forward to using our claws mower as well. And 32 miles an hour on this thing. Not too shabby at all. Let's get this bad boy parked. Oh, you know what? I just remembered. See, I'm already having to break some uh, some habits I'm into. I was about ready to use our mobile workshop to fix our harvester. But that is not going to happen. i got to get used to doing it this way. Run around. Hop in here. And we'll repair our harvester, we'll repair our header, and we'll call it good. And that's where we're going to call in episode one of Hinterland. Welcome everybody to the Modern Pioneer series. I hope you enjoy it. I think we're going to have a good time here on Hinterland. Thank you so much for joining me once again. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. I'd appreciate it. Subscribe if you, uh, if you feel like it. It'd be much appreciated as well. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and I'll see you back here in Germany Tuesday. Have a great day. Talk to you later.